Psalms 27, <clears throat> a Psalm of David. The Lord is my light. It helps you see, it illuminates, there's no hiding, and darkness is of the devil, of wickedness. Jesus is the light. So Jesus says, I am the light, and David writes, the Lord is my light. Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. I wonder who Jesus is. My salvation. Uh, who's Jesus? Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I don't think the Jehovah Witnesses read their Psalms very well. The Lord is my light and my salvation. That it, it, there, Beyond a shadow of doubt of any born-again Bible-believing Christian who has studied and read the Scriptures cannot get by 27.1 and say, that's not Jesus. Whom shall I fear? Jesus kept saying, fear not. <laughs> the Lord is the strength of my life. So David relies on the Lord for living. Wasn't for the Lord, I would have been dead. Many times I should have been dead, but God kept me alive. Whom shall I be afraid? No one. But we all get afraid. David had fear. David feared Saul. When the wicked, that's evil men, also the wicked would also point to the Antichrist. Even my enemies and my foes, people against David, people against Israel, came upon me to eat up my flesh. Now, David's using it as a statement as, you know, they want to devour us. They want to kill us all. They want our land. But when it comes to the Antichrist, man, he's going he's gonna to have a literal mass of Jewish blood. He's going to behead them. He's going to drink their blood. Cannibalism. And that goes on in 2020. And when you go out to a Catholic church and you see their signboard in the front or the side of their church, somewhere where their signboard is, they'll say Mass. Saturday, Sunday, evening, whatever it is. And that Mass is literally, and you can ask any, any Pope, you can ask any priest, any Catholic, if they know any better, they know their catechism, the Mass is the eating and drinking of the body and blood of Jesus. Well, see, you know, our church was established upon Jesus and Peter, the first pope. What do you do in the book of Psalms? That's long before Jesus. It's funny. The Jehovah Witnesses say, well, you know, Jesus is not God. Psalm 27, 1 said, oh, there's Jesus. And the Catholics say, well, we're based upon, you know, A.D. since Jesus. We're not found in the Old Testament. And there they are in verse 2. They stumble and fall, fell. That's not good. Through an host should it camp against me, a whole army, my heart shall not fear. Now David is telling us what God does for him. And at the moment that David's writing this psalm, God, woohoo, we're going. And we've read other psalms where David's like, oh Lord God, hell, we're in trouble. Don't go picking on. David, don't go picking on Peter, because we do the same thing. And if you have no fear of anything, then you need to confess of a false witness, because there are fears. Now, you may not have the fears that someone else has, but there are fears in your life somewhere. Through war should rise against me. And he had plenty of them. And this will, uh, and this will be, and this will I be confident in the Lord, my my light, my salvation, and my strength. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after. There's something right there. David says, "I got one thing to desire." As a Christian, our one thing desire before we read what David wants to learn is to be the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's the tabernacle. That's that David said, I looked out my windows and I saw that the Lord deals among a tent and I deal in cedar and ivory. David can't dwell there. He's not a priest. The only one priest that can go in that tabernacle, I mean, the only ones that can go in that tabernacle is the priest. He must be looking forward to something that he doesn't even know, really know what's going to happen in the millennium when he can go in that tabernacle, when Jesus Christ is there and he's the prince. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Now there's a beauty. Proverbs 31 says beauty is vain, but not here. Realize that inside that tabernacle for David was all gold. And no one saw it. Not one Israelite saw it. The Levite, the priest, not all Levites, only the priests. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And no one ever saw the mercy seat but that high priest once a year. And even then it was dark unless the light of the Lord was in that place. The candlestick was in the holy place. It was not in the most holy place. So when he pulled back that veil, unless God's glory and the light of God, David said in verse 1, that holy, that holy, uh, that, that high priest walked into blackness. Unless the light of God was there, that whole thing was covered. It was covered by sheets. It was covered by uh, uh, animal skins, boards, and a choir of his temple. That's not the temple that Solomon built because Solomon hadn't built it yet. That's that tent. And when, when churches today, we have a temple of God, you know, they think of beauty, wonderful, and, and, and stained glass windows, and, and, you know, beautiful pews, and nice rug, and altar, there's beauty and all that. David's talking about a tent outside his window. Go back and read it. Go back to where sure mercy to David. David said to Nathan, and I dwell in cedar, and the Lord's out there. Look at that, tent. The wind is blowing the house of the Lord out there. You know, we're New Testament, we're by the grace of God. And what get out of the Old Testament. I can't find a building in, in the New Testament. They went house to house, saints' house. I don't think the houses they had had, had stained glass windows and I don't think it had, you know, altars and stuff like that. I don't even find an altar in the New Testament. It's the same. Trying to read a King James 1611 Bible believer, I am! You know what I mean? Let's see. That could be wrong. I've been wrong many times. Let's see. Oh, let me do a little search here. Matthew, 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 Luke, Luke. Oh, Acts. They found an altar with a description to the unknown God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, to wait at the altar, partakers of the altar. That's the priest. Acts, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, eat sacrifice to the altar. That's the priest. Hebrews. Uh, gee, I wonder who Hebrews is written to. Hebrews. Gee, I wonder who Hebrews is written to. James written to the 12 uh, tribes scattered boards. So I wonder who that could be written to. But it says Isaac upon the altar. Uh, Revelation, Revelation. Revelation, Revelation. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't like it, that's tough. But there, I don't see no altar for the church. Say what you will. There's an altar in the... There's an altar in the, in the Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not New Testament. Testament means the death of somebody, Hebrews says. The New Testament begins when Jesus said, It is finished, I give the ghost. 
We'll move on. For the time of trouble, gee, I want that reference is. For the Jewish people. He shall hide me in his pavilion. That's a tent, temporary, movable building. God says, here, you want to you live in my house? Come on in my house. I'll take care of you in time of trouble. Until the desolation uh, of abomination shows up, Jesus speaks about well, Daniel speaks. And when he's revealed, there he is three and a half years. Now he's sitting in the mercy seat. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Revelation 12 says, God has prepared a place for the nation of Israel. He shall set me upon a rock. You know what cell preacher means? It means rock. You know what it is? It's a rock city. Maybe. That rock is also Jesus Christ. It's not Peter the rock. When Jesus said to Peter, thou art this rock, he's pointing to himself. Upon this rock, me, not Peter. Deuteronomy says their rock is not as our rock. Their wine is not as our wine. Yeah, it's true. Their wine is, is, is a literal blood, they say. My wine is grape juice. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. High above. Enemies have been put lowered. Therefore will I offer his, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Sheep, oxen, goats. In the millennium. David, while well, he's living right there. When David gets victory, he goes to the tabernacle and he offers his offering. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. That's David. He invented musical instruments, the Bible tells us. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. God, you listening? Here, listen. Pay attention, God. Hey, God, you want to, you want to stop attending the funeral of the sparrow and come listen to me? God, I need attention. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. <laughs> wow, David, being a little frank there. Da Lord, hear me. Hear, Lord, stop everything. Hear me and then answer me. David's kind of direct with the Lord, but he's got that relationship with God. When thou saidest, seek my face, God speaking, my heart also said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. God says, okay, seek my face. My heart answered, I will. And it's kind of funny because we read today as a family, God told Moses, no man can see my face and live. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Peter, James, and John saw the face of God through Jesus Christ. And they didn't die at that moment. I mean, they died later. That moment on the Mount of Transfiguration when Moses and Elijah showed up, there's God without the body of flesh. Bible's not contradiction at all. Jesus said, no man seen the Father any time. Se seek my face. You can't see my face, Moses. You'll die. Uh, come seek my face, David. You're going to look for a man that you don't even know yet. And when that face gets on a horse and has King of Kings and Lord of Lords on the bridle, God's telling that Jew, seek the face. There he is. There he is. Hide not my hide not thy face, David said. Far from me. God, you want me to seek your face? Yes. I'm going to seek your face. My heart says that. Okay, when I'm in trouble, don't you hide that face. You know what David's doing here is something I say. You really have a serious prayer. And I've got serious prayers right now in my life right now. I don't know how people think about it, but between me and God, God knows my heart. I quote scripture. I say, I say, God, you know what you said in Genesis? And I, I know the man's Adam, but he said, it's not good that a man should dwell alone. I'll make a help feed for him. God, you said that. You know, a man. Uh, last night we read in church, Pastor Ray, a man shall love his wife. And I said to myself, Lord, I can't love my wife. You haven't given me one. 
You took two of my, two of my wives away. I can't love a wife unless you give me one. Bible says if, if a man found a good wife, he, he's obtaining a favor from the Lord. Lord, where's your favor? I don't have a favor no more. I want a wife, Lord. I know some men don't. That's okay with them. Me, I do. I quote the scripture to God. Bible says, ask, seek, and not. God, you know what I want? Most of all, I want Jesus Christ. I want his faith. I want the rapture. Rapture's not going to happen yet. Okay, I want a wife. I want my finances, Lord. I, I have a prayer that's in the Bible. Don't make me too rich, Lord God, where I forget and boast against you. Don't make me too poor where I have to steal, Lord. I want to live right in the middle. David's script. David says, I got, I got, you know, I got a demand, Lord. You said seek your face. My heart says I'm going to seek your face. Now, don't you hide your face. Hide not that face from me and put not thy servant away in anger. Don't judge me. When I'm in anger, a parent should never, ever discipline a child in anger. I know God ain't going to do it. But, you know, even Moses had a little, little argument with God's like, OK, look, that's it. They made that golden calf that wants you to, to eat chicken. And, uh, oh, I'm so mad. At him. I'm, I'm going to kill him. Moses like, time out, Lord. Hold on. And the Lord repented. You know who does that today? Not Moses, for me, the law, Jesus. I believe that God gets mad with the Christians as he got mad with the children of Israel. I'm, I'm going to wipe them out. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit steps in with their prayers. Father, God, he's one of us. He's one of your children. Now, you said Hebrews, you can chastise him. He's a sinner. Father, let me tell you what it's like to be in that human flesh, <laughs> Jesus would say. I mean, if, if, if God was to let loose under his anger, there'd be no one today in this earth. There would be no earth. <laughs> our God's a consuming fire. And yet our God's long-suffering. Thou has been my help. Who's been your help? Credit cards, bank, parents, employer, friend, loan company, 900 number, 800 number, doctor, who has been your help? Leave me not. That's a great prayer. That's a good prayer when you're in trouble, when you're not in trouble. Say, Lord, things are going good. Thank you. Don't leave me. Things are not going so well, Lord. Don't leave me. Neither forsake me. And we have that promise of God. If we are in Christ, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. An Old Testament saint outside of David and Solomon did not have that promise. If they died in the boundaries of the law, for, forsaken the law, sometimes we don't know where they went. That was the law. The law is stiff without excuse. Jesus Christ is full of hope and full of glory and full of mercy. O oh God of my salvation, salvation belongs to God. Don't you dare claim, oh, this person, I got this person saved. Don't you claim that. Even, you know, even the saying it tongue in cheek. You know what you're saying, but it's not your salvation to give. When my father and my mother forsake me, and they may, they will, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Then the Lord will take me up. And Jesus said at the time, he said, if a man love not his father, love not his mother, not love his wife, not love, and, and love me, forsake all, and love, not, and love not himself, he cannot be my disciple. And there are going to be times in your life if you want to serve the Lord and completely do right. I didn't say salvation, but if you want to disciple and love the Lord, you got to forsake. Now, God said, I won't forsake thee. But you got to put a division between those who don't want to do right and don't want to live right and don't want to trust on Jesus. You guys, that's it. Okay, you know, I'm going to pray for you. I'll try to witness to you, but I got to move on. I got to get going in my life. For the Lord.
teach me, there's that teaching again, thy way. You do not be a Christian automatic when you get saved. You have to be taught and you have to be guided. That's what a church is for. It's what the Bible is for. Oh, Lord. That would be the Holy Spirit speaking through your pastor, the Holy Spirit working through the scriptures, the Holy Spirit, that guy who's, who's your Sunday school teacher or your Bible teacher. And lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Because my enemy, the devil, will try to get me off and doing something I'm not supposed to be doing and get me something that would make you unhappy, God. I need to be taught by the Bible what is right and what is wrong. How did people fall into these occults? Save people. There's saved people in the Jehovah Witnesses. How they get into that? They don't read and study their Bible. They don't say, well, wait a minute. You know what they say? The Bible says different. Well, this church over here, the Bible says different. They don't know what the Bible says. And then they fall like we read already. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. And I believe it was David said, let me fall in the hands of the Lord. Let me not fall in the hands of man. For false witnesses, liars, are risen against me. Jesus. Man, they sought, they sought for false witnesses against Jesus. And they had so many false witnesses. And they had so many people rise up that they couldn't even agree with each other against Jesus. And are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. And that's man. Man has no mercy, no grace like God. That's why we got the word torture. There are things that goes on with people take other people and kidnap them. There are things that happens behind uh, marriage doors. Parental doors and children. There are just things happen. They're just cruel. That's man. When God dealt with Noah, he says, before he builds the ark, before I give you the instructions of the ark, let me tell you something, Noah. What's that, Lord? There is violence in the earth. I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of living. David would never say life is good. You know what David says about life? I would have fainted. I would have passed out. If it wasn't with the Lord's mercies. Life is only good with Jehovah. David would say. Life is only good with Jesus. Was what I say. All the stuff I've gone through in my lifetime. If I have not gone through it without Jesus. Oh boy. Wait on the Lord. Be patient. Be of good courage. Wait a minute. Wait on the Lord. Lord, yeah, uh, Lord, stop everything and hear me. <laughs> then give me an answer. <laughs> and David turns around and says, wait on the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes God's answer to prayers is not now. Be of good courage. Keep on going. And he has strengthened thy heart. Not your muscles. Not your legs. Your heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Wait, just in case you didn't get the message again. I say on the Lord. And while you're waiting for the Lord, be a waiter or a waitress. Whatever your sex is. You say, what are you talking about? Jesus gave us an illustration of a man that goes out in the field. And he does the work. And, you know, when he comes in and, and the master says, you know what? You know, go take a, no, don't take a break. He says, serve me until I'm full. Keep on waiting on the Lord. Keep on being a waiter or a waitress for what God wants us to do. It's not our day of rest until he takes us home. 